Hey, hey, what up? It's Wednesday, and I know what day it is. And for those of you who don't usually watch me, you're like, well, good for you know what day it is. Yeah, um, something I'm constantly working on. Anyway, um, so <clears throat> if, you were, if you've been following me for a while, you may remember, I don't even know exactly how long it was ago, that would be um, just a little bit too much to ask for me to remember an exact time that we did this, but about two months ago, give or take, um, we got a fourth dog like crazy people because <laughs> why not? Um, so we adopted B. Her name was not B. Now it's B. She's B E A. Beautiful. Anyways, um, we love her. And, uh, B had a rough time before we got her. We actually adopted her because her person passed away and sadly, her person had only owned her for about um, three weeks or so, and she'd come from another home before that. And when her person passed away, she would had to do a stint in the shelter. <laughs> and <laughs> that is where we came in because I was like, oh, no, baby can't be in the shelter. So we went and picked her up um, and brought her home. And the first two weeks were rough, but, like so rough, um, beyond rough. She got vaccinated uh at the shelter as they do but um she had already been vaccinated and was up to date so then she got sick um she was really sick when we got her uh we had the first week and a half two weeks was runny poo in the house all the time sometimes she'd make it outside but not very often it was gross guys it was really bad uh, we did all the things. We finally got her uh, back to normal. But the thing is, is that uh, I didn't just attribute that to the vaccines. I thought for sure that it was probably a combination of things, right? Like this poor dog. Uh, I don't even know how many. <laughs> for all I know, she had a different food a month before I got her. She switched to a new food. Then she's living with this new person getting acclimated to them. And then he passes and she has to go to the shelter where she may or may not have gotten another food. And then she comes to my house and she has to move in with people she doesn't know and a house she doesn't know with three dogs she doesn't know fit into their pack and also switch foods again. Um, not to mention the emotional, like just the emotional trauma of all of that. Um, and so we, we obviously, because she pooped all over our house we're giving her a lot of grace <laughs> okay that's not something that flies around here with the others but um we were giving her a whole lot of grace because she's been through some stuff man like yeah you probably feel like garbage and we just want to love you and it took her some time to um become herself again to really start playing and start interacting with everyone on a level that you could tell she was just, she was coming out of her shell and it took time and we still have moments, but <laughs> she is a ton of fun now. She's sassy and she tells me stories and when she sleeps in our bed, because who could say no to pibbles, uh, she will pass out so hard that you can just pick her up and her limbs just dangle and her head just goes like she doesn't here at all and you can't make her move off the blankets she is a blanket hog not because she wants to use them but because she doesn't want to move uh, <laughs> like we just we love her to absolute pieces however she's not fully in you know okay sitting and waiting though she's not Mm -mm. really if you ask her to do anything she will give you this stare like she's staring into your soul and here's nothing that you're saying it's really irritating um really irritating especially because we've had her for so long now two months okay that's eight weeks we do sit and wait we have leave it like our dogs are on those commands because they are very important to their safety right like leave it is beyond important because if i drop a pill bottle and the pills go everywhere. I need every dog in my home to back the F up and not touch it. Like, because I have, I have a very smart boy who likes to eat everything as soon as it hits the floor. It's not always smart, but that was something that we ingrained in our dogs from the beginning for their safety. Sit, wait. Those are hugely important 
when it comes to people coming into our home or um, taking turns because we have four dogs. Uh, and then also come like the recall is so important. Um, and we do not have a fenced yard at this point. We are house shopping and um, fenced yard is huge on our list um, for that reason. But for now, it's just really important. And she doesn't have a recall because she will give you the blank stare. She gets into a lot of trouble <laughs> because she just doesn't listen. Um, but instead of being angry with her, instead of punishing her for some of the things that she does still that are not up to our standards, she doesn't meet our expectations, we are still offering her grace because trauma takes time to heal from. And if you do any study of the brain at all, you will learn that when you are in trauma mode, when your brain has like your, your trauma trigger has been pulled, your brain goes into a different mo function mode. So what actually happens is you cannot learn as well. People and animals, it is the same. Um, they, when you're in, when your trauma has been triggered, when the your amygdala specifically, um, when that gets triggered into panic, when the alarm bells are going off, your ability to learn is significantly diminished. It's the way we're built. It's the way they're built. So it's not fair to expect anyone, person, dog, horse, it's not fair to expect them to learn and to retain things when they are coming out of a traumatic experience, especially because recovering from that traumatic experience and getting to the point where they realize they don't need to be in panic anymore when their systems automatically start to reset and go back to, oh, I'm safe. I'm safe. I'm secure. I have my needs met and I'm loved. That takes time. And poor B, we can't put her on our time frame. So we've had her for two months. I can guarantee that she wasn't over the trauma in the first two weeks. And not even the first three because she didn't even start coming out of her shell until week four. And so I know that there's there's still some stuff in there. And and to she we now can start to expect her to learn more, but we still have to be showing up and teaching that instead of showing up and teaching. Anger, disappointment, putting her in a state of fear. Because when we get angry and and whoever it is, whether it's small child, another adult, a dog or a horse, when we get angry, we trigger in them again that fear response, which triggers that switch, that shift into how our brain functions and our ability to learn. So take from this, hopefully you take from this, that when you work with anyone, whether it be a human, horse, dog, whatever, um, and they've been through trauma, you really, really, really have to let go of your expectations and your time frame for them to heal and recover. And you have to, with grace and with understanding, continue to teach them things that you feel like they should have already grasped, but you need to teach it over and over and over with love, respect, and grace until they heal because their brain isn't allowing them to actually learn. So that's my little spiel for tonight because um, my husband and I were talking about it last night and, and that was what we had concluded was that she's not meeting our expectations. We still love her. <laughs> she's still fantastic. It just sucks when she decides that she's not going to come back and she's going for a run. She is the fastest dog we have. <laughs> so... We are getting our exercise. But anyways, I just wanted to share that with you to give you a little bit of a perspective um, and maybe a little bit of understanding that you didn't have before. And if this is something, you know, that you're interested in learning more of, um, I actually covered this in my Facebook group, Heart Centered and Intentional Horsewomen. The link is in my bio and maybe even in the des description for this video. Um and I cover that in my adventure from outburst to peace. This is something that I've done myself going from someone who'd been through trauma and was dealing with rage and anger and um, processing it to be a person that is more peaceful now that can take the time to um, process and address things in a more healthy way, which what do you know 
is more productive and gets me better results. So anyways, feel free to jump on into that group. Even if you are not a horsewoman, we will still love you and we will respect you there and uh, you will still get something from it. So, all right, guys, that's it. That's all I got for you. Happy Wednesday and I will see you later.